Frank is a U.S.-based uh, global law firm with offices in, uh, in, in, in the States, in Europe, and in Asia. Um, in, in London, we have a real focus on, on working with, 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 the, with the London tech community on U.S. expansion, U.S. investment transactions, and U.S. commercial tra transactions as well. Top, top tips for, uh, for, 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 for tech startups look, looking to expand to the U.S. Number one, consider your, 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 your corporate structure. Um, there, there's a real debate going on right, right, right now as to whether or not you should be a U.K. Topco, let's say, with a U.S. subsidiary or a U.S. Topco with a U.K. subsidiary. It makes a big difference from a tax standpoint, for, for, for example, because the, the tax rate in the U.K. is about half of what it is in, in the U.S. However, um, traditionally, U.S. V VCs more often than not would, would expect to have a non-U.S. company, um, so-called flip, into a, a U.S. top company. Um, there's no sort of right or wrong answer. It sort of depends on who is the right in investor that, they, that you're working with and, what, and what's right for, from your, for your business from a tax standpoint and otherwise. As a second tip, consider intellectual property protection. You've got to remember, as a U.K. company, your U.K. intellectual property, your patents, your, your, your trademarks, don't, uh, don't cover you in the U.S. You need to look at U.S. patents, U.S. trademarks, if that's important to, you, to your business. Number, number three, consider having U.S.-specific US um, terms and conditions, that you may have you know, a, a, an English law-specific contract. Um, you will find that you're much uh, more often able to, uh, to get your, your U.S. counterparty uh, to agree to your form terms and conditions if you provide the, uh, the terms and conditions governed by the laws of a specific U.S. state. Um, number four would be understand the litigation landscape in the United States. That unlike in, in the, the UK, the, the US is not loser pays. In other words, even, even if you end up winning a lawsuit, more often, uh, generally speaking, you are going to be required to pay your own legal fees. As a, as a result, you need to be aware that the U.S. is a little bit more lit litigious. A lot of times, litigation will be used as a bit of a business negotiation tool, um, knowing that that that, that the uh, the entity who's being threatened with the litigation might want to pay for to to, to settle it rather than to actually go to, go to court. Um, and finally, um, don't overpay or underutilize advisors when going to the states. And by not overpaying, what I mean is, is that there's lots of high value, high quality advice available to help um, navigate that litigation landscape, to navigate the complexity of, of going to, to the U.S. But don't un under underutilize the, the, those advisors because the U.S. is a little bit more, more complicated than some other jurisdictions, but it's a well-traveled path and there are people out there who, who can help you travel it correctly.